Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we'll continue learning Python and today we'll talk about dictionaries in Python and I'll tell you about the biggest problems in dictionaries. That problem is not related to memory because dictionary as a data structure has tons of problems which are connected to the memory, to the to other stuff. So memory is, is the biggest problem in terms of data structure. However, today we'll talk about refactoring and we'll talk about code style and how dictionaries may mess up our code when we use them as arguments and as the state of the data in our application. So let's start. Imagine that you have uh, a person. So you have a person and you need to save, save three fields for that person. You need to save his ID, his name and his age. Something like that. If you want to save it in a dictionary, then there are tons of problems because dictionaries are unstructured. So you can add as many fields as you wish. You can add, uh, I don't know, age, ID, name, then you can add the surname, then you can add his uh, tax identification number or something like that. That is the first problem. Dictionaries are unstructured. So when we talk about classes or objects, we have a very, very strong, very, very fixed schema. And we need to follow that schema. For example, if you're creating a class, and we'll create it in a minute, but if you're creating a class and you have three variables that you need to set up, then you are required to set up those three variables. However, there is no structure in dictionaries, so you can add as many keys as you wish, you can omit some keys when you create your dictionaries, and because of that, there may be inconsistencies in your code. So, once again, imagine that you need to fill in three fields, age, ID, and uh, username, or just name, but you fill out two fields, username and age. What happens with ID? We don't know, and nothing will happen, so it will be like a bug. There will be no like instant error that ID should be provided because the dictionary is unstructured and you don't need to provide any of that. The second problem is in types and uh, inconsistencies in the data itself. So whenever we work with dictionaries, we may put any data as the values for our dictionary. So for example, I can put H as A, B, C, D. I can put name as uh, I don't know, one, two, three as an integer. So we need to check for those types. So we need to check that uh, age corresponds to a number, to an integer, for example. ID corresponds to an integer of your ID or whatever. And age corresponds to a string. We can do that really easily with uh, data classes in Python, with uh, base models in Pydantic, and I'll show you the solution for the dictionary problem. However, what you need to point out is that with dictionaries, there are a lot of problems that you may need to check for in the future. So the biggest two problems are inconsistencies in the data itself, so inconsistencies in the data validation. So we can have uh, email as a normal string without that at mail.com ending. We can have uh, age as a string. We can have a lot of those problems, a lot of those type problems. But uh, the first problem is that dictionaries are unstructured. And I'll show you that in a minute. So Kind of like that. Let's go to the code and you will see how that really works and what do I mean by all that. All right, so you can see that code here. We have three functions. The first one is create and it just returns a dictionary with three fields, ID, name and age. So that is kind of the state of our data. So not state of our data, but uh, some person in our database, in our program, it doesn't matter. So we have ID as one, name as Andrew and age as 25. Then we have function called split data, which accepts that data. So the data which is returned from create function and it has name as uh, data from name. So it just splits the variable in, uh, splits the variables from the dictionary into separate variables. I don't know why, but yeah, just, just that function. So we can see the problems with dictionaries and run creation is the function which is just creates some data. So data equals create and then prints name is name, so data name. It uh, gets the data from our create function and prints name key and then splits the data, so runs split data from our data. Very simple code. Let's run it and we'll see that we just receive name as Andrew. Very simple, but what is the problem? Imagine our manager comes up to us and uh, says that we need to change name to username. So we don't like name as as the value itself, or no, not our manager, but imagine that we just want to change name to username. What are we doing now? All right, user name. Let's run it again. Boom, key error name. The problem is that uh, I need to change that username here 
then username here, and then username here. Now everything works. But the problem is if that in your normal application, your code will consist of tons of files, of tons of folders, and uh, all of that stuff. So it's going to be really problematic for you to go into each directory, go into each file and change that uh, username to, oh, sorry, change that username to, or change that name to username. And that is the biggest problem because in um, a lot of, in a lot of examples, what we can do is actually just mess up our code because we change one key. Another example is that uh, we can just omit that H key. So imagine I remove that H or I remove that H like that. And then key error data H. That key error is not called somewhere here. It's called in split data or raised in split data. And that is the biggest problem because we don't have any structure. Aside from that, we can add keys that we don't even need. For example, uh, H as uh, that very big number or H as list of range of 100. We can add the data and no one will there is there is there are no tools that uh, allow us to check that we don't have any additional data that we don't need and it's really hard to work with dictionaries what if you want to call a function from that data so for example you can data.save so you update some data with uh, data from name equals something like uh, joe and then you need to save that data you want to call function save from that uh, data object you can't do that because that is a dictionary that is a Python type, standard Python type. So there are a lot of problems with dictionaries, as you can see, and the biggest one is the indexation of the dictionaries. So it's not a problem when we talk about that in the normal sense, but if we want to get that name, so if we want to get that name as an index, so as um, a key, and we want to get the value for that name, the problem is that if I change it somewhere, I need to change it everywhere. And uh, because of that, you can have inconsistencies in your code, as I said it before. So what is the solution and by the way if you if you're wondering if i can just refactor it so refactor or uh, replace it everywhere yeah i can but with dictionaries it's much harder and uh, there are some occasions when you can't really replace everything at once so you need to go through all of your files and there are some occasions when you don't even know where your uh, name is located so for example how do you know that that data so not looking at create how do you know what's inside of the data. So what is inside of the data? If I put data dot, I only see values from dictionaries, but I don't know the keys, I don't know nothing about it. And um, yeah, I think you understand why that's such a big problem. So yeah, you can have inconsistencies if I just change it to full name as Joe, now I have two values for name, so Andrew and Andrew as name and full name as Joe, something like that. And if you want me to solve that problem is, um, and if you want to solve that problem, you can use data classes. So import data classes, or let's import from data classes, import data class. Data class is a Python class or decorator for Python classes that allows you to create very simple schemas for your data. So instead of using dictionary as a schema for your data, what you can do is actually create a class, class over person. And uh, in normal Python code, what you would do is create ID as something, then name as something, name as uh, name as an empty string, for example, ID as zero, something like that. But in data classes, it's much easier. So what we can do is create a decorator data class and um, parentheses are required. And instead of doing all of that, instead of writing our own needs and all of that stuff, what we can do is actually do it like that. ID and then annotation for integer, name, annotation for string, age, annotation for an integer. So what does that do? We created a data class called person and um, the data class has three variables inside of it, ID as an integer, so we check for the type, name as a string, so we check for the type and age as an integer, we check for the type. As I said before, you can have inconsistencies in your data. So imagine that I just put, put uh, age as 25, uh, as a string of 25, like that. And then, for example, I do it bigger than 18 in here. So I check, for example, if data age is uh, bigger than 18, then we do something. But in that case, if I have data age as, um, 
as a string of 25, we will have an error. So what's the addition of data class? Why can't we just use it like that? Class person, ID, name, age. The addition of data class are functions that we are normally using whenever we want to work with our classes. So what I want to do when I create a person? When I create a person, I want to immediately supply ID, name, and age inside of that object. If I do it without data class, I need to write my own init, then you know all that stuff. So self name equals to name that is provided, self age equals to age. But why do we need to do that? You have data class. So data class is a really powerful tool. Instead of returning a dictionary, what we can do is return person. And then watch me press Ctrl P and you can see ID integer, name, string, and age integer. So what we can do right now is immediately supply the values that we need like that so person with data class allows us to create our own our own init with uh, all the supplied values without ever writing our own init so data class is really powerful in that sense aside from that if we're using data classes or we're just using objects in general because we don't uh, you're you're not required to use data class as the only solution for the dictionary problem you can use your own objects you can use identic models you can use I think it's called marshmallow or something like that yeah other models so the most important thing is that you need to use something which is structured because we have structure right here if I want to add um, I don't know something like um, something like uh, tax tax number tax number like that and then I need to add the tax number in all of my people in that case so we have a structure and that structure is um, fixed that's what important because with fixed structure it's easier for you to find bugs in your code because now if i put that text number as an integer what i need to do is provide the text number here i can put default value here but of course i can put default value that is better aside from that i can create my own functions so there are a lot of stuff for you to do in data classes so the most important stuff is that you need something which is structured person is a structured object because we have a uh, a list of variables that we need to supply to create that person okay what we can do aside from that is use annotations because annotations was just dict yeah they are kind of useful but um, they do not show any data that is located inside of that return value however when we're using person or when we're using our object what we can do is actually so as you can see it already shows me that there is an error what we can do when we're using person is actually just know what are the values inside of that data so data dot and you can see age name id i know that i have age i know that i have name and id for sure because i'm returning my person from create function instead of name as um, name as an index for that dictionary we can use dot name and split data the same goes here dot full name dot name dot age dot id like that and of course i can provide person here all right so now what's the case here the case is that we have a very fixed structure and if i want to change name to full name what i can do is shift f6 and full name here and as you can see no problem of course we need to change it here but uh, even if i run that program like that we can see that init gone expected keyword name we don't see like key value error and we don't know why that key value occurred Again, the biggest problems with dictionaries is that they don't have any structure at all. So I can provide anything that I want inside of any dictionary. But with data classes, with uh, models, what I can do is provide the types, even the types, aside from the fixed list of variables that I are required in my object. If I provide 10 as a string right here, it will not crash. So it will work, but still, I can see that there is expected type integer code string instead. So we have type annotations and that is much better so that's how it works i think now you know why you should never provide dictionaries as your arguments so you can do that but be very careful because it may mess up your code in the future you need something which requires structure because with structure you can change it easier and you have something to follow if you have something to follow then it's easier for you to write your code because if you follow the rules then you don't break them and everything works really fine so data class is just one of the solutions you can have other solutions which are in the market but for now i think that is the perfect 
perfect answer for our dictionary problem. So thank you for watching. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and bye-bye.